Ah, uh, yeah, freaking time, y'all. It is a Friday evening, June 7, 2019. This is the Freaker's Ball with your host, Grimnir and Moose Girl. Moose Girl will be along shortly. And right now, you got me here, Grimnir, and we're on reallibertymedia.com live. Uh, go to the Freaker's Ball show page and catch the video if you're on the audio, which you could be on the audio from... <laughs> Many, many places. So, uh, yeah, you might uh, want to, if you're out there on like rlmradio.xyz or freedomsnetwork.com, reallibertyorg tune in, internet radio, wherever, come on over, reallibertymedia.com, go to the Freakers Ball Show page, you can catch the video, there's also the chat there, so it's a good old time, and you'll be able to talk to the Mighty Moose Girl. Yes, Boosie? Hello, hello, hello? <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> Why am I not hearing you? Yes, I am here. <laughs> I guess my motherfucking dog is barking. Oh, okay, no, okay. Not fireworks, so it's fucking crazy motherfucking shit going on. Well, that's quite the opening salvo. Um, <laughs> what, what are the fireworks for? Baseball game. Oh, Okay. The yeah. Eau Claire Express, they, they let light up fireworks on Fridays if they play on Friday night in Eau Claire. Yeah, 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 okay. So, yeah, the dog's not liking it, which I don't blame him, you, you know, it you, hurts his ears. Yeah, you should get, to, you should get him some doggy earmuffs. Something. <laughs> something. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Anyway. Yeah. He's a pop, you know. That'll help, I don't know. So he'll, he'll adjust to it after after a number of years. Yeah, yeah. But until then, so anyway, until then, the, the fireworks are almost done. Oh, okay. I feel bad for dogs. I mean, I do too. You know, that's that's no fun for them. It's no and fun. And people with no. PTSD. Oh, they they at least know what the hell's going on. Right, exactly. You know. Yeah, the dogs. dog's freaking out. I don't yeah. think he's never heard fireworks before no, today. He, so. he, had, he had the thunder the other day, and that was. <laughs> He's really not liking this. They're doing the finale right now. Uh, okay, okay. Well, anyway, let me say hi and howdy down yeah, do that. over do... here in the chat room. Uh, well, we got the barman and beetle right up there on top. We got you and I right there next below there. Uh, Mr. DC and Anti and Asmo and Chalcedony. Miss Graham Z and her wonderful show. Uh, we got uh, I.B. Donzi, a duplicate D.C. there. The Java Doctor and Meester Meister Brow. Uh, we got the Pondergander, uh, who was supposed to do his sign-off for the summer this week, but apparently that's going to happen in a few weeks when he gets back from his river trip. Uh, we got Miss Kate and Rob Works in the Trusty Rome's No One. Trusty Rome's No One. Vanna White, Weather Dark Bots. And then you got the Phantom and Benoit uh, Circle and Sabaloga Noodle. And uh, Dakota, where's, did I, I didn't see, oh, Flash right here, just Circles here, okay. All right, um, and we we got Dakota and Frumpy and uh, JJ's and Kiss and the Smart As Bot and uh, Vinny Vakis, which I, <laughs> don't even ask me to try to figure out what the hell Vinny's next mean these days. He was doing that Vinny Tawaris for he's a while. He's trying to say Vinny Vivacious, but he's not spelling it correctly. I don't that's think... How I, I'm, that's I, how I take it. I, I, Vinny Vacious Vacious or something. I, 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 Vinny Vivacious. Yeah, like I said, don't even bother trying to figure out what he's talking about. It's not spelled right. right. He, he speaks yeah. Arkansian, so... Yeah, he is. <laughs> Hillbilly. Yeah. Sorry, but you are, dude. <laughs> yeah, well, he he knows. He's the, he's proud of it. You know, no, I, I know. Yeah, you know, it's all right. You know, if I was if I was a one of them down south kind of boys, I'd, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even if he, if I grew up where I was born in Wichita Falls, Texas, uh, yeah, then, then, then I would, you would be. I I definitely be. You you may know, be a hillbilly, a redneck at least. Freaking redneck in that uh, that little butthole town. Right, for <laughs> sure. So uh, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't grow up there. So. Oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> awesome. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how's things going in Mooseland? It's going all right. Yeah. I won't be here next week. Next week? What's next week? Blue Ox, baby. Oh, okay, okay. Blue Ox. I'll awesome. be gone. That's the uh, O'Clarian. Oh, Vicious. Okay, I see. I Vaucus. thought you were trying to say Vivacious. Vaucus. Devoid of intelligence. Vaucus. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which... That makes more sense then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Vinny Vaucus. All right, there you go. Okay, um, got it. All right. A- anyway, so. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, that's yeah, right, it that, is cool. Right there in town, right? Yeah, right in Eau Claire. Yep. And um, and uh, Benoit gonna go there. Yep. He's and planning on going. A bunch of other my friends are going. Is Ha huh going? Yep. Ha huh is going. So <laughs> three people from the chat room are going to Blue Ox next weekend that I know of. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So it should be a good. Oh, and by the way, people, Jamgrass TV. Let me just post the link. Just, just because Jamgrass TV. So you might catch a glimpse of me, especially during Billy Strings or the infamous String Dusters yeah. or any other band Luke, that I like. This girl will be up front dancing topless. So. Yep. No, not topless. No, they don't. They <laughs> frown on that. There. It's not that kind of festival. It's a family friendly festival. Oh. Okay. No topless fucking hippie chicks running around with this one. Dang it. <laughs> Sorry, but there isn't. What's bluegrass without a few topless chicks? I mean, well, you might. I mean, maybe late at, at the late night stage, you might catch a little fucking boobage, but yeah, 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 yeah. Probably not during the day when there's <laughs> families around. They would frown that. I would get kicked out if I fucking did that, which I wouldn't do it anyway. But well, you never know. I'm uh, not that kind of person. Oh, I'm not a nudist. I'm not. I, I just. I am not a nudist. Okay, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't even have my shirt painted on me. I, 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 I just, no, that would not work. I, I just remember the the very first bluegrass festival I ever went to mm-hmm. when I was like, I don't know, sixteen, something like that. 15? Okay. It was in Long. Is it at Long Beach? In not Long Beach. Yeah, Long Beach. Okay. Santa Barbara, one of those places. Uh, anyway, uh, I think it was Long Beach. Anyway, it was at the 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 college place there, the big yeah. college there, and and uh, those those girls danced around topless. This like, is what I'm saying. You like, know hey. what? You know what caused the down the downfall of that? Uh, prudes. No feminism. Oh uh, well, these girls they were they were they were empowered. Their tits were empowering them. Right. No, I'm saying that what caused <laughs> the downfall of girls dancing nude was feminism. Oh, okay. That's just my take on it. Anyway, that was a fun show. I mean, it doesn't bother me. I don't give a shit. You know, be nude for all you, if you want. I don't care. But, um, I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> People right. would think I was fucking loony bin if they fucking, if I was walking around topless. Okay. Come on now. Okay. They would think I was fucking crazy. Uh, uh, maybe. No, they would. All right. They would. They'd be like, girl, really? How old are you? Old enough to show these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. No, not happening. <laughs> anyway. I'll leave so that no, for the All right, so, so, so Moose Girl won't be here next week. We'll do Balls to the Wall then. No, I won't. And uh, that, that'll be fun. Yep. So. Uh, I mean, I get it. You're joking around, you know, but to me, that's not a fun time. Walking around with my tits hang out would not be a fun time for me. <laughs> it's... it's just not. <laughs> Call me a prude. I don't care. No, no, I no. like to leave more to the imagination. All right, <laughs> <You know? all> right. <laughs> I mean, for Christ's sake, you know. I mean, at the one festival I went to two weeks ago, there was girls walking around fucking bikinis. It's like, okay. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. You know, that's fine. When you look like that and you're that age, have at it, baby. Do it. Do it to it. Right on, right on. <laughs> Want it if you got it. You betcha. Oh, I love tits too. I have See? nothing, no, nothing against tits. Tits on a ritz. Hmm, good cracker. My tits are not going to be flapping out in the wind. That's all there is to it. Yeah. I mean, the the the, the closest I would get would probably be wearing my swimsuit top as a shirt. Yeah. That would be all right. Close enough. <laughs> Just 
just trying to get people to tune in, you know. The leggings, the leggings, okay, let's talk about fucking leggings for a second. Leggings? Leggings are only for certain people. Is that like the flash okay. dance thing? Oh, they're lit. No, that's a different kind of leggings, Grim. These are skin tight pants. They use it. They're literally leggings, but they women use them as pants. Okay, and that's all well and good, but only if you have a good enough body to pull it off. Oh, you yeah. know these young girls. What they do is they wear these skin tight fucking leggings, and then they wear like a short shirt. So the leggings become pants. Well, they're not supposed to be pants. All right. Well, I have seen a quite a number of spandex disasters. <laughs> they're like spandex like that. Yeah. It's like, if you don't know what they are, uh, just look it up. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the way I, I, I look at leggings is... They should be covered... Your ass should be covered up with a shirt. Okay. Or something. Yeah, you know, and guys love leggings. But they don't love the leggings if you're 300 pounds, okay? <laughs> no. If you're 300 pounds and you're wearing fucking leggings, well, wait. you shouldn't be wearing them, okay? If, if, if they're like 7 foot 8 and they're 300 pounds, that's probably all right. Right, but if you're some big old fat ass... <laughs> Sorry, but if you are, do not wear leggings. Please oh, save us all from that. Mm. And I know that sounds fucking mean, but truly, some people should not wear fucking leggings. Some people but they do not. anyway. I get it. They're comfortable, right? Are they? Supposedly. Okay. But I just don't get the trend. I mean, I get the trend totally because I understand it, but at the same time, I'm like, you girls are fucking nuts. Yeah, no, it isn't, Rob. And no, not when you're wearing, trying to wear but, skinny but, people clothes. Let, let me, let you me look like an idiot when you're fat and when you're trying to wear skinny people clothes. I'm well, sorry. Well, let, let me tell you what's worse than fat. What? Bony. I, I, Bony I, is bad, I, yeah. That, you know. that grosses me out when I can see all the chicks like rib bones and shit. Anorexic is not yeah, attractive either. Like, that's no. disgusting. Just eat a yes. fucking sandwich. <laughs> you know, just... And it hurts, like elbows and And, and knees. They, those are the ones, and they're usually trying to strut their stuff like they think it looks good. They think they're all that. Yep. Yeah, it's like, ooh. Because they're scoop, super skinny. Yeah, it just, you know, I, I don't want to be able to see your freaking bones. No, no. <laughs> not... I, most guys, see, women don't think that way, though. Women think that guys want skinny girls. I mean, well, yeah, that's what women think, that guys want skinny, super skinny girls. Shapely, shapely. Right, okay, so what I said the other day to my son, though, because I, I went to Walmart the other day, and I said, you know what I noticed? He's like, what? Like, there's a lot of fat fucking people out there. Like, <laughs> Walmart, fat. yeah. Well, that's, fucking, that's, fucking huge. That, no, that's, their that's, asses are fucking almost three feet fucking wide. Uh, that's the target audience of okay, Walmart. Now how can you fucking like that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, how can you want be okay with that. Right. And I get it. Some of it's fucking genetics or whatever. But come on, people. Uh, you it's know, not you know, attractive. And it's hard on your body to be like that. You know, you know what kind of messed stuff up? It was that song. Um, I like big butts. Right. And, and, and to a much, much lesser degree. No, I'm talking major fat. No, I, 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 I like 300 I pounds. I understand, All right. but, but but that Two song. Two hundred three hundred girl, that, pound that, girl. That, 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 oh, wait, you really, you really want to be with a three hundred fifty three hundred pound girl? No, no, but that song kind of empowered the 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 fat women to um. Just let it all hang out. Yeah, and be to, like, be, okay. to be to be proud of it. To be I'm proud of it. Fat. <laughs> All right. Anyway. I'm sorry. I'm I'm mean. I'm uh, mean. I'm sorry. I like people. I like all people. But I just I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I guess they do, Vinny. I guess they say more more pushing for the cushion. More cushion for the pushing. I don't know. How do you do that if you can't find the fucking hole? <laughs> How do you even push into something if you can't fucking even oh, get in there? 
Yeah, and the thing is that they that can, can't be good. Yeah, what? The, the thing is that that size they can never be clean. No, you you, you can't clean in between all the rolls. <laughs> so it's anyway, gross. how do we get? Let's, let's not keep going. Know. Let's not keep know. going down that because path. Because you started talking about me walking around topless. That's how I started. <laughs> Oh, Which God. is not going to happen. <laughs> right. Even well, if I was at a nudist colony, I probably wouldn't do it. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, it went in Rome, right? Uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm just a modest prude in some ways. I like to leave things to the imagination a little bit, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well. But there must be a lot of guys out there like them fat women because I am not like that. I'm not 250, 300, and I don't have a man, which I'm kind of glad I don't, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather be alone than be with some fucking dickhead, you know. I'm that's glad just, to hear that. That's, that's yeah, good, because that's... it's just a waste of time, dude. Yeah. So, and that goes with men, too, for men, too, you sure, know. Sure, sure. Don't waste your time with a fucking dickhead. <laughs> Don't. Trust me on that one. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, we're, we're going to kick off some jams here. Okay. Uh, all right. Yesterday, uh, Dr. John passed away. The, the fabulous, amazing, talented uh, Dr. John, for those of you familiar with him. Yes, I know who he was. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he did some great stuff, man. And a lot of his stuff was behind the scenes. But uh, some of it was not. Some of it, he, he definitely uh, got his hits out there. So we're going to kick off the tribute to Mr. Dr. John. You will be okay, missed. Okay, yes, let's do that. Yep, you will be missed, sir. Yes, you will. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that is some nice stuff right there, very nice. Uh, we had uh, three tracks by Mr. Dr. John, Mr. Doctor, um, uh, Dr. John, <laughs> that last track, <laughs> last track there, Iko, Iko, yes, that was uh, Jeff Healy sitting in, and uh, several other really cool folks in there as well. Uh, apparently, that's called the Sunday Night Band, uh, that was Sweet. that one. Before that, such a night, which was oh, Iko, Iko, by the way, that was a uh, Moose Girl request. Uh, before that, it was a Kate request. There, Miss Kate request. Such a night, and we kicked it off with Right Place, Wrong Time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all great stuff, man. I tell you, man, the guy, just cool, just cool. That's all. Um, don't mess. With what acronyms? I don't know, but uh, whatever. I don't know either, people. <laughs> What the hell are you talking about? Uh, boy, I'm getting uh, I'm getting uh, barman barman highlighted me. Oh, hmm. okay. Thank you, barman, for letting me know so that my name was mentioned. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Man, yeah. Let me see what I got marked here. I got a few things. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about this really quick. I'm surprised by this actually. Um, I don't, I'm not too confident in it totally yet, but the cop that shot the woman in her pajamas in the alley was sentenced, sentenced today, June, what is it, 7th? 7th, yeah. 2019? Yeah. To 12 and a half years in prison. He was found guilty of murder, or of manslaughter, or whatever the charges were. Let's see, what was it exactly? I think it was second degree murder, wasn't it? Uh, guilty of murder in the third degree and manslaughter in the second degree. Okay. He was found not guilty of murder in the second degree. So he was found guilty of murder in the third degree and manslaughter in the second degree. And so the, they did all the victim statements. They did all that stuff, right? And then the attorney this week says, oh, well, we only want him to do two weeks of pri in prison every year. Yeah. It's like, no, no. And then they said, oh, so he can continue serving the community. For one thing, I thought he was off the force. I don't think so they're murder. they're talking about putting him back on the force. This guy murdered a woman in her pajamas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure murder is not really serving the community. No, it is not. Yeah. It's that's, like. That's, that's like kind of the opposite of serving right. the community. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know, Rob, but there's 
levels, you know, manslaughter, unintended, whatever. You know, there's homicide, which is like cold-blooded murder. <laughs> right, right. They didn't call this a homicide. They initially wanted to charge him with a homicide. They tried to get him on second-degree murder. It should have been homicide. It should have been unarmed woman in her pajamas. But anyway, even though he got 12, he sentences sentenced to 12 and a half years, I don't think he'll serve that whole time. Oh, no. But I'm really not. surprised. I was really worried. I, when I saw that the attorney was asking for just two weeks, I'm like, dude, really? Yeah, well, that's an attorney's job, you know. Right, yeah, but, you know, no, they put him away for 12 and a half years, so, right. supposedly. They'll let him out for good behavior in probably six years. Yeah. Maybe pop me that link, if you would. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I thought I put it in there. I don't see it. I did not. Okay. Hang on. All right. So I was kind of glad to see that um, happen. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So, uh, yeah, you know, just taking around just killing people for no reason. No, or... and then they want to put him back on the force so he can continue serving the community. No, dude, no, uh, uh, no, not cool people serving the community. Right, <laughs> serving by killing them. Yeah, yeah that's, mean, uh, sorry, that's not well, serving we, them we, in we, any we way. Can, we can with deal with that. that them. We, we don't need that kind of service for calling nine one one, and you are in your pajamas. Right. Yeah. Anyway, um, I just wanted to touch base on that one. Okay. <clears throat> but, um, no, they can do wrong and well then. And they do wrong, but usually well, they get off. I saying, mean, we he, were surprised I, that I, this I, guy I, even got convicted. I think what he's saying is, in the eyes of the community or oh, the law right, yes. or the cops, they can do no wrong. Not that exactly. they can't do no wrong. Obviously, they do... They all do wrong every day. <laughs> yeah, just by putting that costume on. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that, uh, yeah. All right, here's a, another article. I saw you posted mm -hmm. a link from probably a different site on today. And, and, I, and I wanted to talk about this from a, a different aspect, maybe than just what they're talking about here. But here it is from Market Watch. Walmart to offer grocery delivery. Yeah, I was going to talk about that one next. Right I'm to the customer's that. fridge, even if they're not at home. If they're not there. Yeah. Excuse me? No yeah, Walmart yeah. fucking employee is coming into my motherfucking house and putting food in my house. Right. Uh, no, it, that is not a good idea. It's crazy. It's craziness. Uh, this it, is nuts, people. Well, this says, is going too fucking far, okay? Says, uh, forget the last mile. Walmart Incorporated is taking delivery the last few inches. <laughs> so the, the retail giant announced today a new service that will deliver groceries, not just to your <laughs> home, but to your fridge, even no. when you're not there. Walmart. No, I don't want a Walmart employees <laughs> in my home. Walmart in-home delivery will launch... In, uh, in the fall, in three markets: Kansas City, Pittsburgh, and Vero Beach, Florida. It says uh, once once we learned how to do pickup well, we knew it would unlock the ability to deliver. Chief Executive Doug McMillan said in a statement. But what uh, what if what if we not only cover the last mile to cover uh, to customers' uh, homes, but the last few steps? What if we put their groceries away inside their kitchens or garages? Can you imagine? Implications of this? Can no, you imagine the no, problems no. that this is going to cause? It's absolutely, because look, man, what what does Walmart pay? Like eleven fifty to start an yeah. hour. And, and do you at want the store. do you want a minimum wage or basically a minimum or low wage right. employee? Um, and and you've you've shopped at Walmart before. You've seen what sure. kind of what kind of people they hire. Yes. And and I mean, half of them look like criminals. Um, <laughs> so I, I, it, 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 we got some good ones at our Walmart store, the one well, no, I'm, I'm not saying they're all that, that way. Of course, there's okay. some good ones, but uh, but some of them are not. And, right. and they they're going to use some kind of thing to automatically unlock your door, some electronic deal. Fuck that. Um. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine? And, and, can you imagine the implications, though? Okay. Uh, now, now listen, they, they, they try and, and quell those fears by saying groceries will be delivered by tenured employees who will go yeah. through an extensive training program 
yeah. and be vetted through background checks and motor vehicle records verification. Whatever. Yeah, I, I, I ain't trusted in that. I don't care. Um, definitely not. Uh, it says they will gain entry to the house through a smart entry technology. Fuck that. And, <laughs> and, and, and wear a camera so oh customers can remotely can watch remotely and are expected to show the same care and respect <laughs> with which they would treat a friend or family's home. Yeah, right. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you know, these a lot of these various cop shops are supposed to wear, or they wear these uh, on, on, on uniform cameras. Yeah, they can turn but, them on and off, people. Yeah, and they do turn them off. Uh, they do. When, 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 whenever they're doing something wrong, they turn them off or they hide, they cover right. them up. Uh, they, they, they do some... Uh, stuff. This is ridiculous, people. Yeah. This is not a good idea. You know but, what they should just do is but, just drive around with a semi up and down the block. <laughs> oh, all this Walmart shit. But you what know do what? you need today, people? But but you, you know? know what? I I, I guarantee you, there's gonna be people that think this is a great idea. And there's gonna be. Yeah, and and they they're like, oh, instead of just delivering them at my door, then I have to put them away. Now they're gonna put them away for me. Oh yeah, when I'm not like home. People that want a smart toaster or a smart washing machine or dishwasher. It's like you people are fucking whack. Uh, These people that are like, yeah, 5G, yeah. It's like, you're a fucking moron. Uh, well, and it, it's pretty I mean, much, you know, all all of these technologies could be good things, but they could. They wind up all being screwed up. Right. Um, and, yeah, and well, then, exactly. What could pot the implications of this are huge. Like, you have some stranger coming in your house and your dog, barts, bite, dog bites the Walmart dude. Yeah. Or your cat, you know. Then you got to, then all of a sudden you're being sued for fucking, you know, no, this is not a good idea having people like the strangers come into your house when yeah. you're not there. I'm yeah. sorry, that freaks me out. That would irk me really bad. I would not be good with that. I would, well, and, I wouldn't do it. To and and his, 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 another part of the deal is, uh, assuming you could trust the uh, particular employee, who's to say they don't have a friend that would take whatever device right. they used to get in your house and do it when, you, yeah. when, when you're not getting a delivery. Exactly. You know, so... The implications uh, of this are just not... Uh, this is not going to work out. I guarantee you this is not going to fucking work out. Yeah. Uh, I don't see this working out very well at all. Anyway, but, like you say, you know, there's going to be some people that will probably like it. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> they will. They certainly will. And it, it, to me, it's just you gotta, you gotta be nuts. You gotta be crazy anyway. to have some stranger. It's like okay, you know, it's just like these people that have Alexa and Google in their house. It's like you gotta. I mean, they're already surveilling you through what you buy. If you right. use a card to buy anything, they keep a record of all your purchases. Right. The stores do. Like I went to Walmart to return this laundry detergent. This is a true story. Because it was this all laundry detergent, and it it cost like ten fifty, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's a big old jug of it. I used it. I used, I bought two of them. I bought them at the same, different places though. All right. But I I said I go I gotta take this laundry detergent back because it's just sitting on my shelf down there, and I've used it once or twice. And the reason I stopped using it is because it made my skin itch. It's really weird because it's this all, it's called, it's by all, and it's called free and clear, and it's supposed to be for sensitive skin. Oh, uh, that's nasty. Not. Yeah. It made me fucking break out a fucking rash. I would imagine so. It's... So, I'm itching, and all my clothes, I mean, it was bad. Like, my whole body, like, everything I put on, like, I was itching, okay? For yeah. like, I'm like, what the fuck? The only thing I changed was the laundry detergent, so I knew it had to be the laundry detergent. Right. So as soon as I go back to my regular laundry detergent, no, the itching stops, right? Yeah. So I'm like, well, fuck this, because I have one bigger jug, and then a bigger jug even of like 166 ounces that I got at Sam's Club, apparently. Okay. So I go to Walmart, and I bring it back. I don't have a receipt, because I bought this, like, seriously last year, right? Okay. And my brother's like, take it back to Walmart, because I was talking to them about it. Right. I'm like, okay. So I take it back. They look up the fucking receipt. And this was over a year oh, ago when sure, I bought sure. this stuff. Yeah, they yeah. looked it up on their computer. I'll bet. They, looked, yeah. they found the receipt. <laughs> and so they knew exactly how much I paid for it. Yeah, I'm sure they did. 
<laughs> so they gave me a gift card for ten dollars and fifty two cents. I'm like, fuck yeah, because I wasn't gonna use it, and that's a lot of money to spend. Just have it sit on my shelf and not use it, and it caused me to, a rash, right? Right. Then they couldn't find the other one. Well, then I looked up online, and I realized Sam's Club sells bulk, in bulk, you know? Right. So I had to have gotten that one at Sam's Club, the other one, the big, okay. the 166-ounce one. All right. So I'm going to take that back to Sam's Club and get my money back on that one, too. Good. Because that one was like $15. Right. But you know what? It, it, you get a product that's not worth it, it you know, it, it does you wrong, and you need, you know, you shouldn't just eat that money. You know, my my kids think I'm crazy. Like the other day, I went to get Chinese food, and I ordered chicken fried rice. They forgot to put the chicken fried rice in my bag, right? Okay. So I go back, man's like, no, don't go back, mom. The food will be cold by the time you get back. I'm like, oh bullshit! I paid for it. Yeah. You know, so I called them up. I'm like, you guys forgot my fried rice. You know. Yep. I went back down there and got my fried rice because it's like, fuck that. I'm not going to pay for something I didn't get. Exactly. Either that or give me $5, you know. Christ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I just I just, I just, just wanted to say, you, you got to fucking, you know, like the, the laundry detergent. That was $25 total with both those jugs. Right. So it's like, I'm not going to fucking, no, this is a faulty. I was going to call all, actually. All, call some, whoever makes all, which I think Procter & Gamble or something. Probably, yeah. I'm going to call them up and say, hey, your fucking laundry detergent is supposed to be for sensitive skin. Guess what? It made me break out in a rash. It, it means it's going to give you sensitive skin. Yes, basically. <laughs> it's like, I think you guys need to, like, take this off the shelf or something, because they're still selling it. Right. Yeah. But anyway... Uh, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway um, you know, like you were, talk, you were talking about uh, the tracking and all that stuff. Right. The tracking. I mean, it's like, why would you want? It's basically okay. like you're inviting well, well, them me, in well, your me, house well, every day. Let me let me tell you about something today, okay. versus something I don't know. Last October, September. All right. Uh, so last September, so I had to. I, I needed to sell some silver. So I, I yeah. looked I looked up some places online and I found a place up in Santa Fe and I took it up there. Yeah. And the place was like a fortress getting in there, you know, you got these buzzers and you go into this little oh, metal sure. room before they let you into the store. And then right. you go in there and then they take your like license and all your information. Like and, a pawn shop kind of like uh, some I, pawn shop or something. Yeah, like what, that. whatever. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Um and but they write all your information down, make sure everything and and then right. they, and then they rip you off on the price. Um, because it was they paid yeah. they paid like a, you know a dollar less than spot up there, right? Um, and so uh, now I needed to, to sell some again, and and so I found a place over in Edgewood, and I uh, which is just up the road from me, which is not mm -hmm. fifty five miles away to to go to Santa Fe. Uh, this is like ten miles. Anyway, right. So um, so I called the guy up and, and I make sure that he's, he's you know, buys the silver. He's yeah, oh yeah, come on. I said, what, 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 what do you pay? He says, we pay spot. I said, oh, really, cool. really? Yeah, okay, cool. So I, so I go in there, and he, 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 they don't. He's, you know, it's a smaller place, I guess. So he doesn't have a bunch of cash laying around, or uh -huh. money in the bank, or I, I don't know how, how he gets his money, but whatever. So he can only buy a certain amount of, of what I wanted to sell. Right. Which is fine. Which is fine. Um, right. Yeah. But anyway, so I, so I, so I go over to the place and. And he had also had like an electronic door, but he, you know, just lets you right in because he's standing right there, and uh, he doesn't have cameras all over the place like that other place. And, right, that's um, cool. Yeah, so he just you know takes it and measures it and counts the rounds and pays as it, it should be pays me in cash. Never, right, never asked for it. There's no ID involved at all, and uh, and I said, oh, I I take a check if you got one if you if you want. And he says, oh no, never take a cash. Uh, never take a check for for a bullion. No. Which I like. Well, why not? I I don't know why not, but whatever. Uh, it didn't matter to me. So it could I mean, be bad. But anyway, he's you know, there's no cameras and right. photos, and they don't take your ID or nothing in there. How old is he? Older guy or younger guy? Uh, about my age, I guess. Maybe probably okay. younger than me. I don't know. So in his fifties or Oh, oh by the way, by the way, he's a big Packer fan. 
Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> I would definitely go there, bro. Yeah. I would definitely go there. Yeah, he had these figures, you know. Some people that's a huge Packers fan. Yeah, he, he had these figures of Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Rodgers up on the wall. <laughs> sweet, sweet. That's got to be a good guy. Yeah, anyway, so he said, yeah, well, I'll, I'll be getting, you know, I, I get more cash all the time, so I'll give you a call next week when I got, you know, more to buy, buy the rest of your stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. So there's, like, no tracking or anything going on there. Right, yeah, yeah. no, that's great. That's the way it should be, yeah. It, it is the way it should be, but it was yes. certainly not what I was expecting. <laughs> right. I'm glad that's you cool. found that place. Though. Yeah, me too, and, and he pays full full spot, so suck it, man. Yeah, um, he's yeah. not trying to make a buck or whatever. Well, I'm sure he's trying to make a buck. He runs a store, but... Right, yeah. You know, whatever, you know, whatever, it's cool. So he sells bullion there? I think it's mostly like a jewelry repair. Oh, okay, okay. But he's got, like, he does, like, like on the yeah, side or something. because when I went in, there's this old woman in there trying to get these earrings fixed or whatever. And, they, and okay. they've got, like, a like a little hair place in the back back room. Where some hair woman, salon? Yeah, some woman back there doing haircuts or whatever. Well, so it's like a multi tier No, it's just that guy and maybe, maybe this woman that he knows that runs the hair place. In a little, right, yeah, little, okay. little, he probably had said, oh, "Well, I don't need all this space. I can rent out this room to this woman. She can run her business. right, right to do her hair salon. Yeah, yeah, whatever. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's cool. that's how it should be. <laughs> anyway, let me let's uh, cover this story real quick here. Okay. Um, even though it's not really a quick story to cover, we don't really need to get too in depth into it because, but I just wanted to share it because I found it interesting. Mm -mm. Scientists save Schrodinger's cat. Okay. Are, are you familiar with Schrodinger's cat? No. Okay, well, Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment. Oh, okay. And, and the experiment goes, there's a cat in a box. <laughs> okay? It's sealed into uh -huh. a box. And there's a vial of poison in there, poisonous gas, that okay. at some point the gas is going to release. Mm -hmm. So is the cat in the box as you're looking at it, alive or dead? Alive. No, it's both. It's both. This, this is the, the. Oh, it's both. This, yeah, because it's going to be dead you, soon. Well, you don't know if it's alive or dead when you look at it, so it's it's right, actually true. in a dual state. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a thought experiment. So anyway, um, in this uh, thing here, they have figured out how to make it so that it could. Be in whatever state you want it to be. It, it, it's 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 kind of hard to describe. And, and reading the article, mm -hmm. I don't know if it would really help anybody. Um, uh, but just to, uh, let me let me give you a little bit here. Uh, it says researchers were able to predict the the kind of atomic behavior called a quantum jump, and even reverse the jump in a new experiment on an artificial atom. Such research could bring up bigger questions about the nature of physics and could have important implications for improving quantum computers that rely on the rules of quantum mechanics in order to function. Our experiment shows that there's more to the story of how quantum mechanics works. Like I said, okay. you're going to need to, to read it if it interests you. It's, it's probably not for everybody. It's posted over on gizmodo.com. Um, here, here's the link for it. It'll be in the it'll be in the blog. Okay. But uh, um, it, you don't you don't know if it exists unless you see it. You don't. You, they, you were told there's a cat in there, but you don't know for sure unless you see it okay. with your own eyes. But, 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 there, but there's, something. there's there's something else about quantum mechanics, quantum physics, mm -hmm. is that you when you observe a thing, yeah. It changes. It changes it by you observing it. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the, what it, what you would predict uh, for a particular element of, of some type, uh, would, uh -huh. the the action that you would expect it to do, and that it that it obviously has does does if you had uh, checked the results afterwards. But if you had actually watched it, if you had observed it as it was doing it, it would be different action. 
Okay. Just by, just by the nature, by the fact of you observing it, it changes. Hmm. Huh. And it's it's a very strange phenomenon, but it is what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, so, oh yeah, the, the dual slit experiment is another very interesting thing there, um, and I saw a video on that recently um, showing. Well, I don't even want to get into it because it's, it's 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 a little too much for for this show. But right. um, it, it's very interesting when when you observe uh, the light, the 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 what light form, the wave, because light light is a waveform, right? Yes. Okay. So when 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 the light form is not being observed, as it goes through these two slits, it pr behaves in a certain way. But when it's being observed, it behaves completely differently. So it, it's just, it, it's anyway. You I just, I, I guarantee you, if you read through this article, you'll be good. Uh, the parts that you can understand, anyway, um, which is right. not, which is not all of it. Uh, not me, anyway. <laughs> Maybe somebody can, but I, I, I don't get it. But they, they actually talk about the, uh, uh, the, the slit experiment in here. Um, the. the the flashing photon signal, the second microwave pulse, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's all those yeah. kinds of... So, things. anyway, was, I just found it to be extremely interesting um, and uh, something that I, certain people in here would, would really enjoy uh, reading through that article, even though it's on Gizmodo, uh, which, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, I, I found it fascinating. But, uh, cool. Anyway, let's play some more music, and then we'll come All back right, and talk about that. more. And uh, we shall return. We shall. We we do as we do. As we do. Uh, somebody join a goober. Goober. <laughs> 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 oh, God. All right. This here is uh, Ghoul Town. <laughs> That there's uh, Kenny Wayne Shepherd off of his new album. It's called Woman Like You. That album just came out a few days ago, uh, the 31st of May. So uh, check it out, Kenny Wayne Shepherd fans. Definitely good stuff. Before that, we had The Pretty Reckless doing Miss Nothing. That uh, lead singer, in case you're wondering who that lead singer is, her name is Taylor Momsen. And whew, she is a smoking gal. Anyway, we kicked it off there with Ghoul Town and walking through the desert uh, with a crow, by the way. Walking through the desert with a crow, but it's not. That's not part of the title. It's just walking through the desert. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Moose Girl, you out there? Am I talking to myself? <laughs> I'm here. All right. <laughs> cool. So, uh, yep, good stuff, huh? Yes. Yes. Although I couldn't hear half the song, so I had to shut down the water fox because for some reason Freaker's Ball would not load. So I do not know. Oh, okay. Well, I have noticed uh, on my uh, monitoring computer that, uh -huh. uh, a couple of times it had buffers on me. So um, I'm not sure if that's happening to everybody, but uh, from the broad yeah. from the broadcast again, it's solid. Um, I think it's it's. Uh, Buffering. I think that's what it was. Yeah, there may be, yeah, and you know, then that's maybe a problem with Vaughn or whatever. Yeah, but, it uh, could be. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. Let's see what else I had from this week. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is a story I found today. It's from June 1st, 2019. Okay. And it's from CE Collective Evolution dot com. Uh, okay. And the title is the headline is and just like that, UFOs are real in the mainstream. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they are. Yeah. So it says the facts. Uh, the mainstream media recently ran a psych a news cycle admitting that UFOs are real, and the mm -hmm. government agencies have known about it for a very long time. Right. And what to reflect on. Is the admission, this admission brings up many nuances and discussions that are important for reflection. One thing is clear, however, 
we are living, living in inspiring and changing times, but we also must continue to nurture our intuition and critical thinking. Sure. It says, a sign of change, feelings of frustration, ulterior motives. These are all ideas that have been coming to mind and those have been well aware of the factual reality that UFOs are in fact real, verifiable for at least the last three or four decades. Denied, ridiculed, and made out to be crazy, those who now see the mainstream media talking in the plenty about UFOs are wondering why. I'm not really wondering why. I'm just, I pretty much know why. Right, yeah, the thing is, now, because most people, for whatever reason, even though they have total distrust of the government, only believe something when the government says it. Right, And it's exactly. just like, well, what the, what, what, what the hell is going on with that? Right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um... ACT. It says, a sign of change, this is further down... Perhaps the most inspiring aspect of this conversation is that we can truly, we truly can be saying to ourselves, things are changing, perceptions are changing, our minds are opening up, which is a good thing. Right. I have long discussed that the importance of the ET conversation truly lies in consciousness. The fact that humanity's curiosity about ETs has grown immensely in recent years has, a, has an underlying conversation about consciousness that cannot be avoided. I wrote about this in detail in an article titled Why Humanity is So Obsessed with Violent Aliens Right Now. Anyway, um, this guy, I like this article. It's well written. Cool. Uh, he brings up a lot of good points. I, I, I'm glad he wrote it because it's, you know, they did. They basically said now, yeah, UFOs are real. You know, they released it. We talked about that last week, that Navy released the footage of those UFOs or that and it wasn't the Na US Navy or it was British I think yeah the RAF or something yeah the Brit Royal Air Force right okay yeah. it was the Air Force but yeah I mean so they're bringing this into the mainstream but, for but you know what e even with that out there with that information out there and these these people that only understand or believe something when the government says so right still don't believe that they're that it's real. <laughs> they won't. Yeah, even if the mainstream media is saying it. No, you know, they'll right, be, oh, right. no. Right, right. Well, in conjunction with that, and not necessarily related, but possibly mm -hmm. the FBI, this is from yesterday, okay. the FBI just released Bigfoot's official file. Oh, yeah, I saw that yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> It says, it says, the FBI's vault is a fascinating corner of the Internet, and some may believe a fantastic waste of time, uh, the, which I, I'm, I'm on that side that believe that the FBI's stuff is a fantastic waste of time. Anyway, it oh, says, yeah. the, the Bureau's Freedom of Information Act library houses thousands of previously sealed or long-buried files on very famous and very dead celebrities, criminals, politicians, and other persons of interest. And uh, they're all on display for free public perusal, uh, which is how you suddenly find yourself scrutinizing reports on everyone from Al Capone to Anna Nicole Smith for <laughs> three hours one afternoon. Now, the FBI usually doesn't make such documents public until after the person dies, which right. makes the latest release from the vault... 22 glorious pages concerning one Bigfoot, particularly notable for two <laughs> reasons. It appears to be confirmation that Bigfoot is dead, and Bigfoot was real. Bigfoot, there's not just Probably. one, though. Yeah, I, I know, but this is the FBI oh, okay, we're okay. talking about. We're talking about the liars, okay. the liars from the FBI. Anyway, they go through this whole article here, talking about the mythical creature known as Bigfoot, as if it's not real. Um, or if you prefer Sask Sasquatch, Yowie, Skunk Ape, or Yowie, ya uh, it has a long, uh, murky history. Uh, people swear they have see been seeing it for centuries, which, of course, I they have. They uh, have. Just like with the UFOs, people have been seeing them for right. decades, uh, millennia. Uh, right. And, and it's all documented even on the cave painting walls. Um, yep. Anyway, as well as Bigfoot, too. Anyway, it's usually in the woods of North America or often in the Pacific Northwest. No, they see them all over the world. Europe, oh, yeah, they're all over the world. Europe, they Africa, see them right Lake Wisconsin, China. which is like 50 miles from Eau Claire. Oh, well, Eau Claire. speaking of Wisconsin, this article is on uh, WISN. 
So. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Bigfoot's official file, which popular mechanics examine in full, mostly follows the correspondence between the Bigfoot Information Center, the BIC, like a lighter, uh, and the, the Dallas, Oregon, and FBI Scientific uh, Technical Services Division from 76 to 77. So here we are. How many years later? Um, <laughs> many? Uh, 50? A, a, lot, a lot of 40, years. 42? Yeah, something like Whatever. A lot of years later. Um, yeah. So anyway, in this thing, they, they examined a hair sample. Uh, which right. Is a, a little piece it of... It to be deer hair. Yeah, a little piece of skin with some hairs in it. And, and it and was so, deer. <laughs> so, right, it was a deer. And so people are going to yeah. read this and they're going to say, oh, it was it was never a Bigfoot. It was yeah, a right. deer. Yeah, they're going to be like, oh, yeah. Because of this one case, right. this one situation, um, and they're going to say, oh, uh, there's no... There is no Bigfoot. The FBI said so. Of course, they didn't say so. They just said this one sample that they tested 45 years ago or however long, that that one happened to be a deer. And whether or not it was actually a deer or not, we don't know. But that's what they said. So, you know, those same people that won't believe that UFOs are real, even though the government said so, are going to believe that Bigfoot's not real because the government said so. So they're, they're holding, like... Uh, conflicting opinions there on information from their favorite source. So, uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I, I found it um, humorous. So, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, boy. But uh, how about this? Uh, page not found? What do you mean, page not found? <laughs> I just marked this today. The mm -hmm. hell? Where is it? Oh, oh here's, here's a link to it on there. Their very site. Okay, the link is still there. It's so like it still gets the article, but my they must have changed the URL or something. Whatever. Something. Anyway, Glacier National Park. You familiar with that place? Yes. Okay, in Glacier National Park, they had been posting for a long time now, many years, twenty odd years, mm -hmm. these signs up in their park that says "Gone by 2020." Yeah, and just there, there, there were gonna there were gonna be no more glaciers by twenty twenty. Right. So apparently they've been slowly and secretly removing those signs. Right, I saw <laughs> that. They, they didn't make a hunt much of a to do about it. They just went out there and uh, right. started taking them they, down. They they made a big deal about it when they thought it was somehow gonna benefit them. And then when they realized, Oh, well, global warming's not real and the glaciers are not disappearing, and we're still getting snow, and and glaciers appear to be growing, not melting in recent years. <laughs> this guy yeah. here, uh, this is posted on WhatsApp with that. Uh, Roger Roots, uh, from the, he's the founder of Lysander Spooner University, which I didn't even know there was a Lysander Spooner University. I didn't either. Anyway, so... Uh, May 30th, 2019, St. Mary, Montana. Officials at the Glacier National Park have begun quietly removing and altering signs and government literature which told visitors that the park's glaciers were all expected to be disappeared by either 2020 or 2030. In recent years, the National Park Service prominently featured brochures, signs, and films which boldly proclaimed all glaciers at GNP were melting away rapidly. But now, officials at GNP seem to be scrambling to hide or replace their previous hysterical claims while avoiding any notice that the public, uh, to the public that claims they were inaccurate. Teams from Lysander Spooner University visiting the park each September have noted that GNP's most famous glaciers, such as Grinnell Glacier, and the Jackson, hey Jackson, you got your own glacier. Jackson <laughs> Glacier appeared to have been growing, not shrinking, since around 2010. Imagine that. The Jackson, Jackson Glacier, easily seen from uh, the Going to the Sun Highway, may have grown as much as 25% or more over the past decade. Uh, the, the centerpiece of the, visit, of the visitor center at St. Mary, near the east boundary, is a large three-dimension diorama showing lights going out as glaciers disappear. Visitors press a button to see the diorama <laughs> lit up like a Christmas tree. 
in 1850, then showing fewer and fewer lights until the diorama goes completely dark. As recently as September 2018, what, nine, eight, nine months ago, uh, the diorama displayed a sign saying GNP's glaciers were expected to disappear completely by 2020, which is a mere, what, five months away, six months away. <laughs> and they got a video here showing the diorama. But at some point during the past winter, as Visitor Center was closed to the public, workers replaced the diorama's Gone by 2020 engraving with a new sign indicating the glaciers will disappear in future generations. <laughs> Almost everywhere, the park's specific claims of impending glacier disappearance have been replaced with a more nuanced message indicating that everyone agrees that glaciers are melting. Um, no, no, no everyone <laughs> does not agree. Anyway, some, some signs indicate that glacier melt is accelerating. A common trick used by the National Park Service at GNP to display old black and white photos of glaciers from bygone years, say 1922, next to photos of the same glacier taken in more recent years, showing that the glaciers diminished, say, 2006. Anyone familiar with the glaciers in the northern Rockies knows that the glaciers tend to grow for nine months each winter and melt right. for three months each summer. Huh. Yeah. Imagine that. They they melt <laughs> when it's warm out and they grow when it's cold. Yes. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, these, this, these, these deceptive practices they use in order to get Oh, these, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's hilarious watching them fall on their faces uh, over this kind of stuff. So, diorama, not diarrhea. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, I, I I found that to be most amusing. Um. <laughs> yes. Oh boy. Um. Okay. <laughs> okay. You got any more? So, um, hello? Yeah, you got more? I just have uh, this one. Okay, let's hear it. I just found this. Yes, the overwhelming majority, my bro. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Created airplanes that change world history, officially called the Advanced Development Research Skunk Works, was a classified subdivision of Lockheed, DARPA? Founded, during, founded during World War II to build fighter jet P-80. It was a secret within Lockheed and engineers could tell no one about their work. During the Cold War in the 50s, the U.S. needed no Soviet missile and bomber capability, but the CIA could not get spies behind the Iron Curtain. So Eisenhower tasked Skunk Works to build a spy plane that could soar at 70,000 feet to avoid Soviet missiles to gather intelligence. Mm -hmm. it, anyway, I don't know if this is interesting. I just, uh, some people like the history of aeronautics and that type of thing. Uh, it's, it's, you know, interesting to see how they did all their, their built their little spy crap. and Right, you know, and most people don't know it, you know, yeah. but they said this thing was tested in Area 51. Oh, well. So, you know, they released this information, like, they trickle it out. Sure. You know what I mean? They trickle it out. I mean, I see on this thing they show a picture of a stealth bomber, um, which I think they they got that technology from ET alien um, intelligence, the stealth technology. Right. I believe that became that came from alien intelligence. Highly possible. Highly I likely. I believe that it, the back in the Eisenhower days they made a deal with the Greys, and I think they want the diamonds and the gold from this planet. Because the diamonds, especially, because I think Earth is possibly one of the only planets that has that right. available, right. that resource. So I believe that the aliens made a deal with Eisenhower, and there was a trade made, like stealth technology for diamonds or gold, possibly, even. Right, right. Because if Earth is the only place that has diamonds, 
you know, they're possibly using that for uh, their their communication. It, it, it's obvious. Earth is obviously not the only place that has diamonds because diamonds are gonna wherever there's probably carbon. Not, no. Yeah, there's, probably not. Yeah, probably. There's carbon everywhere, and, and if but I think there's other things that they would want. What, what else would they want, Grim? The gold. It's got to be a resource, and maybe the people themselves. You know, hey, we, we'll snatch some of your people once in a while too. You know. Right, right, right. Do testing on them and yeah, whatever, but. I believe that they walk among us, though. Sure. Why I believe not? that they that they do that, that they can replicate looking like a human, and they can just walk among us and un, unbeknownst to the rest of us. Right, right, right. Absolutely, I agree. I mean, you see some people, and they actually look like fucking aliens, dude. Uh, you're right, they do. I mean, they don't look normal at all. Yeah. Like a yeah. normal human. <laughs> I don't know how to use, there's no such thing as normal really, but you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to explain. All it's right. something about them. You know what I mean? That seems off. Sure. Or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many I've actually come in contact with, but I know in my life it's been a few, at least. Right. You know, directly in contact with, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, just 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 look at Vinny. He's obviously an alien. I don't know. No, he's just a hillbilly. <laughs> he's not no alien. All right, all right. Uh, here's a here's a, a totally different <laughs> totally different topic, man. We've got to cover this before we hit another music set here. And and I'm not going through a hundred things, but. Um, Play it again. Play what again, Doctor John? I got some Doctor John. Don't you worry. Um, all right. Yeah, I have some Doctor John. I, don't, I you didn't play though. I requested two, I think. Uh, all right. Well, I got more. So anyway, um, yeah. here you go. From uh, the Mind Unleashed. Dot com. One hundred okay. reasons to homeschool your kids. Okay. Anyway, it says, from fostering creativity and freedom to providing impressive educational outcomes, homeschooling is an increasingly appealing option. And it says 100 reasons, but I'm not going to give them all to you, so whatever. Okay. Homeschoolers perform well academically. Your kids may be happier. I'm pretty sure they will be. Uh, issues like ADHD might disappear or be less of a problem. Uh, it doesn't matter if they fidget. You may be happier. All that time spent on your kids' homework can now be used more productively for family learning and living. You can still work and homeschool, and even grow a successful business while homeschooling your kids. Your kids can also build successful businesses as many grown unschoolers become entrepreneurs. You can be a single parent and homeschool your kids. They've got links. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've got links in this article to all these things oh, okay. that I'm mentioning. So when you look at it later, which hopefully okay. you will if you are interested, or well, have, my kids are done. Yeah, I, I know, but anyway. Uh, but the, yeah, still it's good. You, yeah, yeah, you can tell other people that have kids about it. Right. Yes. Okay. Your kids can be little for longer. Early school enrollment enrollment has been linked by Harvard researchers with troubling rates of ADHD diagnosis. A year can make a big difference in early childhood development. Yeah. Some of us are just late bloomers. We don't need all need to be on America's early blooming conveyor belt. No, um, they want you to grow up fast. Right. This is uh, homeschooling can help those kids who might be early bloomers and graduate from college at 16, not high school from college. At from 16. college, right? Yeah, high school. The school it's too slow. Well, it's designed for the for the lowest common denominator. Right, it's designed for the lowest. And 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 for kids. Yeah. When when I was in school, it was like so boring. I mean, I'd be done with it all was. whatever the classwork was, and then all the homework. And right. I, and there'd still be you know half the class left to go. Right. Yeah. And then my son Matt, the same thing. He was so bored. You know, he would just be done with it. You know, it's like okay, now yeah. what? You know. Right. So uh, they go so slow, dude. They and, go and then, so slow. And then, as you're sitting there waiting, then of course you wind right. up getting in trouble for not and paying, then, you paying know, attention. I'm sorry, but if your kid can't keep up, 
then that's not the teacher's fault. You know, they need to speed up the curriculum a little bit. If you've got some kids out there able to graduate college at age 16, there's something wrong here. Where, where is this info, Vinny? Uh, link me up, Vinny, uh, that info. Um, okay. All right, he wants me to read something. All right, um, and he says, uh, anyway, there's a whole bunch of reasons here. There's 100 reasons. I, I only give you like 15 there, but... Um, Anything you can to get your your kids out of these stupid indoctrination centers, where they where they teach goddamn crazy stuff now nowadays. Um, ready to go fishing? What ready to? I, I, what, what are you talking about? I, I, is, are you trying to confuse <laughs> me, Danny? I, I don't know what you're trying to tell me, but it, you're confusing me. And, and uh, Roger, who's that? I, I don't know. Roger Ramjet. Roger Murtaugh. <laughs> From his show today? I I I no, I don't know who's show. I I don't know what he's talking about. Dude, we're 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 fucking goddamn broadcasting right now. No, that's fine. Just give me a link if you got something. See the video. I'm not gonna play he's a video. Please read. No, he can't read it right now. He can't watch a YouTube video right now. He's broadcasting. Are you tuned in? I don't know what you want. Anyway, I'm gonna play some music. <laughs> and you can, we are broadcasting. And you, and you can tell me, and you you can tell me about the whatever it is you want We're me to look at. We're not playing that on our show. Well, you can tell me about whatever it is you want me to look at during during during, the, during this right. music chat. Right. We're doing chat. music break right now. So tell me about it in the chat during the music Did chat. You forget we are like on air. See, I, I told you, man. I, I try to understand you, but <laughs> but but you confuse the He's hell like, out of me. Can't understand hillbillies all the time. <laughs> you know that now by now, and the now thing isn't coming on for me. Yeah, right yeah I know, Hans. The FBI never mentioned Ellis and Bigfoot connection. There, uh, just finally. They, we are alive oh, on the okay. Air. So from your post today, is that it? No, that's not it. I don't know. Whatever. Um, He's talking about his show from earlier. Uh, all right. Well, I, I don't you know. I think he wants you to like include this Rick. This lemon law, it's not even stuff oh, like that. It's all right, lemon well, law for cars. It's L I M O N, isn't it? I, I I don't know, whatever. Anyway, um, whatever, dude. Give me a link, buddy, and uh, and uh, and I'll see what I can do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm I'm, I'm easily sure. confused. Yeah, Hans points out that the FBI never mentions the connection between Elvis and Bigfoot. Uh, what, what, which there, there's a definite connection there. Okay. You were talking about I'm not Roger there, Roots. I was. I, I remember. He wasn't talking about Roger Roots. I don't know who were Roger you? Roots is. Uh, were you hey, talking hey. about Roger Roots, Grim? No, no. No. See. Yeah, the FBI. The, F the FBI. Are you already here now too? <laughs> so uh, Hansel, the FBI may have a huge file on Mojo Nixon. But and Bojo is the one that made the connection between Ellis and Bigfoot. But the FBI is not going to bring out Mojo Nixon into the public eye. They don't want him to know. <laughs> Just fucking with you. <laughs> All right, this is a, a guy named two guys, Johnny Winner and Mac Rebenack. You may know Mac Rebenack as Doctor John. Yeah. Oh boy, that is some cool stuff right there, let me tell you. Uh, Joe Bonamassa and Brian Setz are doing further on up the road back in 2015 at the Orpheum in Minnesota. You know, Brian Setzer, he, he's a he's a great guitar player, but totally outclassed by Joe Bonamassa, as is pretty much everybody. You know, I, 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 yep. he, but he was having a good time, both having a good time up there. Uh, so it was a great, great, uh, great video there. Uh, anyway, before that, Taj Mo or Taj Mahal and Keb Mo. Doing it. Don't nice. Leave Me Here. I think that's off of a, a new thing they've got working on. Uh, I guess that's a couple years old. I thought it was a new thing they, they were coming out with, but uh, uh, Taj Mahal and Kev Moe together, man. Whew. Great stuff. And we kicked it off with Johnny Witter and Mac Rebenak, uh Dr. John, 
there, uh, Kate, Miss Kate requests there, you lied too much. Nice. Yeah. So, all right, uh, Pete, Dr. John, we're going to miss you, buddy. Yeah, we will. And uh, so uh, that that's all great stuff. Uh, so, Vinny, are you with us? Hello, hello. I can't hear him. What? Uh, I hear him. I hear him. You hear him? Oh, I thought I yeah I thought I clicked it twice. Oh, Here you. I am. Okay, there you are. There he is. I hear hello, him. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Missy. Hey, hey, Vinny. Hey, yeah, you got uh, you got your uh, group of folks up there for the for the music festival. Oh, we do. Week, huh? Carl, from the from the chat room actually. Yeah. Huh. How cool Which is, is that? Really cool. Yeah. yeah. Way cool. Yeah. Hey, so you guys are talking about Roger Roots and that glacier deal. Yeah, uh, right. You, you, see, know, you see, Vinny, here's his part of the thing. Let me, let me. I read it. Yeah, article. well, I, I, I was I, trying I, to say. Who, I know. Who, just, 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 I know let, me, let, let me just say this. Okay. <laughs> I read an article, and it goes in in through my eyes, into the brain cells, and out, <laughs> and out through the mouth. The important points stick, but little stuff like people's names, I, I they're gone immediately. So when you said this guy's name, I was like, "Who? <laughs> Never heard of him." <laughs> so go ahead. And, <laughs> so so tell me, <laughs> explain to me the connection between uh, your what 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 needs to be connected here. Yes. Okay. So Roger Roots. Um, well, who is this guy talking? Right. Well, he is. He's Hello, hey, Andy. So he's been in several places. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you you faded yeah. for a second there. All right. Well, Roger's been, you know, throughout the week. Uh, when I was in Vegas there, and you know, I met him. We spent lots of time together. I uh, interviewed him uh, there at the Lysan. Uh, let me you're, just go here right now. Is your so mic cutting is, out? What's going on there? What's the matter? It's like your mic's cutting out or something. Well, I mean, this, Put your mic. It's right here. Hold on, just a second. Keep your mic steady and I don't move, it. Hold on. move around. I'm trying to move this button now. Just make sure it's not. Try not to move around so oh, much. Right. Well, no, no, it's it's stationary. But right. oh, okay. And I'm just trying to click it here and see if there's a problem there. Okay. I don't know why there's a problem now. Just don't move your balls oh, away I'm from not. the wall. Not. It's it's stationary. It stays right there. Right, 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 okay. Right. So I was trying to click it. Maybe see if it was some. I don't know whether it'd be a problem. Let me go with this. All, All right. right. Ready? Yeah. Go. Yep. Okay, so this is from Roger. It is uh, he says the highest duty is uh, challenge the modern challenging the modern governmental leviathan of unchecked power. My client is Liberty. Founder Roger Roots hosted the Lysander Spoonie Seventeenth Symposium from the Asian Culture Center in downtown Las Vegas, Nevada, December the sixteenth. Uh, speakers included Morgan Philpot, Neil Wampler. Jamie Landon, John Lamb, Lou Blue Laker, Michael Elliott, Gavin Sign, and we had singer Gary Colombo. Now, Morgan Philpot, uh, uh, did I really leave? Uh, I sure did. Left, uh, <laughs> I left out in this description. I got. I see also a link that I need to correct down there that's expired. Um, but who I was speaking about today, uh, Rick Coiver. He was there, and also uh, in this playlist, this is from the Real Liberty Media YouTube channel playlist of the Bundy Ranch standoff. Uh, and there's, I'm sorry, he's interrupted by a tweet from a sheriff there. So, anyways, these people all connected, working for freedom. There, uh, let's look at the difference here. So we have uh, uh, people that will do radio; they talk about things. There's people that go and report on things, meet these people that are in the front lines. Uh, these people have chosen to uh, uh, take on the powers that be and try to interrupt the system from within. So th these guys here, uh, Roger, uh, bar member, uh, these guys are lawyers, Morgan Philpot, uh, and uh, as I don't remember if, uh, well, he's, he acted in, in legal capacity, so he must have some legal degree too, also Rick Koiber. Now, they just arrested him. They have been trying to convict this guy for 10 years. I think they took four tries out of him. The last one, no, the time before the last, the judge dismissed it before all, because of all the prosecutorial misconduct. Um, and I just wanted to tie these people in all together where you know where I'm talking about. And I did my broadcast today, right, on right. Rick Koiver right. and what's going on, tying all that in with uh, Ammon Bundy 
uh, to the Oregon standoff, uh, to all these other people that are now in prison for the rest of their life or a great deal of it. Todd Engel, uh, we have uh, uh, Francis uh, uh, Schaefer Cox, I'm sorry, from Alaska, uh, the guy from Missouri. There's a lot of people here that are all come together trying to fight for uh, a just world here. And so many times, you know, what are we doing? Sometimes you listen to uh, to Rick in the video, in the, my link from our, our log today, the broadcast, and listen to what he has to say about at all this coming uh, powers and how it's going to be come down to uh, you're either going to be killed or put in prison. But do you want to? You want that to be your? I don't want that. I don't want it to come for me for that. Uh, now Hal talks about how to avoid that. So there's so much wrong with what people are doing, trying to do good, where they are being sacrificed or throwing themselves, uh, you know, into this fodder. Um, Lavoie Finicum killed for standing in the gap. Uh, this is serious business here, and it's the world that uh, of oppression that we live in. The problem that I've, I see is that one person can't do it. One person will be made an example of. Such, and even though it wasn't just one person in the the Voice Finnegan case, he one person ended up losing their life. So they well, basically targeted one person to be made an example of in order to put the fear fear in people. And I've always said that, often said this on this show. We've been doing this show eleven years. There's power in numbers. The problem is there's not enough people willing to to, to do what he did. And if you if it's just one person doing it, it can be done, but it's a rare thing where the person doesn't end up dead. You know, you know why? You know why the Bundys? A small group of people is easily you said easy. can be made. Yeah, I did. I did say easily Thank can you. be made a target of. You know what I'm saying, Vin? Like Listen, you have yes, to have power let, numbers. Let, you know? let me let me explain something to you there. Sure. You know why the Bundys aren't dead? It's because that so many people came that day. Right, stay right. over time. So, that's what I'm saying. There's power in numbers. Yeah, I, and I was talking about these people here, this group of people that I just talked about, Morgan mm -hmm. Philpott, uh, Rick Koiber, um, uh, th these other folks all coming together, fighting together. Yeah, and and that's what he talks about. There's power in numbers coming together. That's what Carol Bundy told me in the message and, and thanking me for, for standing up and speaking mm -hmm. to these matters. Um Right, yeah. and then when, and, and then by the sheer number, like the government's gonna be in a shit fucking ton of trouble if they go around fucking starting to kill a bunch, a group of people, not just one person. Well, let that's alone, their technique. They if they, if they fucking go down a group of fucking hundred people or more, they're gonna have to fucking answer to that. They can't. Just, I mean, we're not at that point yet where they can they could get away with something like that. At That's least why nobody here. died that they day. They do it overseas. They do it when they're going to war with another country. You know. They killed uh, almost a hundred in Waco. Right. Okay. They've done it here before. It's not like they've never done it because they will do it. Then I'm like you say, Waco. It's a perfect example. Look at the uh, no dapple. Uh, how many of those people? And dapple. Are, are that away. one lady almost lost her freaking arm. I don't yeah, think well, anyone died. There may be even a few people that did die, but like a from heart attacks or something. There's people that are in prison now for a very long time because right. they protested. Yep, and so and you know, the, the, the Bundy Ranch. Here and go, these people that believe that this is a free country, they don't know. They don't think about those stories. They don't think about Waco. They don't think about Lavoie Finicum. They don't think about Leonard Peltier. They don't think about all these people because they're they're ignorant by choice because they don't think there's anything they can do. They just want to fucking most people, I think, just want to live their life, go to work, you know, oh, yeah, we got to pay our taxes. We don't like it, but we do it, you know, that type of mentality, and that's the problem. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to go get my cat back, but he lives on a farm just, well, just across the holler anyway, so that's a happy <laughs> life. I, I'd like to get a puppy. I'd like to get a goat and go. uh, cut grass. I'd like to get chickens and collect my <laughs> fresh eggs and build my garden bigger. But you know what? Right. I, I have a duty. Uh, and an obligation and a calling to be ready uh, to to go back when and you stand. You say ready to gap. go. What are you meaning? Is there like you mean just if, you know, a friend in need? It ain't over. 
right? No, I'm not. No, it is you're, not. You over. say you're tired of hearing about it's the Bundys, but I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you it's not over. Well, the I'm not really tired not, of hearing about it. That's one story out of many, though. No, you know what listen. I mean? it's, not that right. it's not important. It's it that is, it's one story out of many. I'm know? gonna stand champion because this is so relevant well, you're in every to the story. aspect of life. I'm involved in the story. Right, you're involved in it. I, so, yeah, I was there. Right, and, so you, you know, were there. So you. I'm, I'm actually involved. I was a witness at the federal trial. Number trial. 33. Right. Huh? Witness yeah, 33. 303. Oh, 303. 303. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just not somebody talking about stuff. I'm, no, I'm I actually a, 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 call a historian if it's making a record and setting it because mainstream media is not going to do that. No, the, no, the, the revolution will not be televised. Yeah, um, it will be to their to how they want it to be televised, but they're not going to televise it. The real what's really going on. It's same with like with the, what happened with the Dapple. It was totally slanted towards the media and towards pro government. All the stories you heard were right. all based on mainstream media anyway. Yeah. Hal and I spoke you know, about this early on while this was going on at the time, and I've worked in the pipe manufacturing fabrication, mm -hmm. and so I know, and it was an inspector, so I know about a lot of this stuff, and I, and, uh, I told them about this, and so you, know, you have, they should have went for setting the safety standards and make, because... Of course, but they don't, they just put these pipelines now. in with no yeah. regard to anything. Right. Right, exactly. You no, know, it's ridiculous that they do this claim this eminent domain crap, and then it doesn't matter if you're an Indian tribe or if you're just a, a Bundy. You know, it doesn't matter if you're just me. If they say, "Oh, we're gonna put a pipeline through your fucking backyard," and you know, there's nothing you can do about it. It's like bullshit. You know, bullshit. Well, yeah, I want to uh, speak just a little bit more since I've obviously sure. gone way past that five minutes. Um, Leah Satilli, uh, she was uh, instrumental in a lot of what I call paid propagandas um, and the information that the general public get from mainstream media. She's an incredible writer. Um, I'm going to send the link over and just so y'all can check it out later on. But anyway, okay, sure. she says how I translate what it means. She's talking about uh, um, all these 10,000-word uh, writings that are all done by men. But anyways... She is a very incredible writer, and uh, uh, even where we um, digress in opinion, I still uh, admire her skills and, and dedication. Uh, but she's what I call the patties, you know, anti-poots, the anti-bundies, uh, Leah Satilli. She's written for uh, Rolling Stones, uh, Washington Post, and uh, no telling how many other places. Uh, but I read everything she writes, and uh, I keep up with her. She did the Bundyville uh, podcast series, and uh, I covered that some time ago, and you can find it at right. uh, the know, Real Liberty I'm Media Author Vine. I'm assuming that you know about other stories out there. You obviously know about Waco, I, but you know I about speak Ruby about Ridge. All of those. Yes, you know about Ruby Ridge. You know about Pine Ridge Reservation and the Leonard Peltier, Peltier case. I'm not sure about Peltier. Okay, you do know. You're aware of those cases. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't I mean, so this has been going on for and many more, many, basically. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've covered so much over. I mean, I've been doing this for a few years now. Right, right. Yeah, and so uh, beyond just speaking, I, I met James Freeland in uh, 2011. Was it or uh, yeah, or 12? Anyways, on the bus, on the Greyhound, uh, out and going out west, and uh, really, what who's responsible for bringing me in the radio and meeting people like Ardana here who uh who stood with the the Browns uh Yeah, she's a tough lady. Yeah, she's a, a big activist. Somebody yeah, shoot that she's... duck. Get him. Get him. Give him a cracker. It's like, you know, we do what we can, you know. <laughs> I mean, you do what you can, I guess. Well, let's see. That's why I I have you know, I can't go get a puppy, right? Because what if the right, call comes? You because go on it, the road or something, unless you have a dog that can travel well, and you don't want to. Ha I understand that because you have to feed a dog, and you have to, you know. Yeah, I'm like not. A kid. I'm not Basically. doing radio because uh, I like to hear myself speak. No, no, no. None of us do it for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh, weird. I mean, I, it took me a 
while to get over listening to myself. It really did. I mean, at first I was like a little bit freaked out about it, but after a while it just kind of wears off. You yeah. don't think about it anymore. Well, I, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I'm here to uh, to champion just cause, uh, not just, just cause. Just cause is a lot different than U.S. justice. Yeah. Let's right. just get that cleaned up there. Absolutely <laughs> right. If you listen to me, I, I hope you hear in me the echo of Hal and Anthony from behind the woodshed. Oh, is uh, I count as uh, one of my greatest mentors. Oh, I just hear heel Billy. <laughs> listen, I need to get this part straight, too. It is okay. not heel Billy. It is no, okay. redneck heel Billy Southern Fried Slasic Country okay. with a Western Swing and a dab of salsa from Tulsa. All right. I like and that, I, actually. I really like I'm you got to write that down, though, because all of them want to remember that. <laughs> I've, I've written it a few times. And you did this to attribute that to the long, tall Tulsian. Thank okay. you very much. But you're not that tall, though. Well, five ten and a half okay. taller than a lot of people. Oh so, yeah, you know, you got that. <laughs> uh, well, he's, he's and done. I can jump too, and I'm white, and that's where I use my white hey, privilege. You can jump. Wow. He's definitely taller than Flash. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, so are you, Moose. But right, <laughs> I, uh, well, five five, really. Oh yeah. And I have the power of poop. Yeah. Boom, right there in the chat. I don't have to take the dog out. He's not whining. He, I think he's crushed out. So don't tell me, yeah. mister. If my dog had to go out, I would be taking him out. Let, Trust let, me on that one. I don't let want to sleeping to dogs out. lie. What? I said, let sleeping dogs lie. Exactly. Don't be get, putting ideas in his head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Grimner, any uh, any. Questions or comments says to Roger Roots and uh, Rick Koiber and Morgan. Yeah, you know, I, I I interviewed. Well, uh, yeah, see, I, I mean, I never heard of the guy until I read that article, uh, or, or if I had, I totally forgot about him. And even when I read it, I totally forgot about him. I just this is the guy that put this that wrote this article. Right, he just read yeah. the article. He had never yeah. heard of him. Well, well, what brought me in was you didn't know about Lysander. Spooner I did not University. know a lot about Lysander Spooner University. Where is it? While it exists in the ether, and, I guess, uh, floating well, like around. The internet or something. It's in your heart and mind. I'll, uh, I have links well, to the Well, there were the all students of this university. No, well, I, I have some read. Of us are. Well, uh, I have read. Uh, I, here, let, me, let me give you the video link here. Okay. And uh, let's see, is it in here? Uh, the link to uh, Roger. Uh, I see it's not. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There you go. In here. So, anyways, I think I got that copy deal. Let me just, you can look it up right in here in the video description. And it bears the playlist also, the Bundy Ranch standoff. And uh, almost every video in there is my original work. Uh, okay, cool. I, I do have a couple of copies in there of uh, some other uh, uh, attributed work. Yeah. Cool. Okay. No, that's uh, great. I, I, you know, because you were talking about I was like, what the hell is he talking about? I, was well, saying, I don't I was, type, t talk good and type anyways, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yes, uh, that was right, a good well, chance for you to make fun of my accent, Lucy. <laughs> yeah, it was. But I didn't. I, I, you know, I give you shit when I can. You know. <laughs> oh, okay, I won't bark at him, Kate. Uh, I'm the real Liberty Media, a roving reporter, and so just uh, for. Uh, is to clarify and legitimacy for Roger Root and who he is. And uh, all right, well, uh, I'll uh, tell you from, from from that one article, sharp guy. He's very intelligent. I like I said, I've got some interviews with him, and um, still writing or learning to write, uh, improving. Uh, I got to tell you, Sky Reeve over there challenged me in uh, 2017 in the Olive uh, little chatterbox over there for from the Oregonian Lives to. Uh, basically to uh, uh, say what I'm saying and do it better when I'm trying to type. So I've, I've, yeah, I've been, I've been studying the whole time, and I practice and I use tools and all that. So I definitely see an improvement over my writing. And so I just, I'm going to keep revise, revise, revise. I'm going to keep telling the story. I'm not, uh, yeah. I'm not giving up. I, I'm a, like I said, uh, you know, call me a Bundy champion or whatever. I'm good with that too. None of us are giving yeah. up. No, I'm not. I, no, gave, no, I no. gave up. I gave up. I don't I'm, care. Take, I'm, taking, <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm jumping out if okay, I can't. Okay, sorry. I'm I going. I'm going fishing. 
Yeah, that's See? a good plan. Mm-hmm. Camping on the river. Got a canoe. Woohoo. Rolling on the right. river. Canoe, canoe. Mm-hmm. So I'll be back. In, uh, yeah, I was going to sign off today or yesterday now, but uh, no. I guess I'll do that a little later. With the, the uh, final uh, broadcast in that series, episode 13 and a half. <laughs> All right. All yeah. right. All right, hey right, guys, thanks, uh, and I'm gonna go over here and push it. Yeah, button. thanks for calling in, Vin. Yeah, all right, yeah. and thank I, thanks here. for letting me come in and put that yeah. all together. All right. You're welcome. Bye bye, y'all. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. <laughs> thanks to Vincent Easley too for uh, sorting out the confusion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're just gonna play some more music right now. Yeah, let's do that. After that little after conversation. That. And, um, I don't know, where's my deal here? Um, and, uh, we will be back on the other side of this with yep. more interesting stories. <laughs> right. Dr. John, hey, we've heard a couple of his other tunes tonight. This was actually a Vinny request, so, uh, here you go. Oh, yeah. That's some grooving stuff right there. Not bad. Let me tell you, I know none of you ever heard that before. Uh, that's some guy named Boppin' Steve, uh, and he emulates Jerry Lee Lewis very well with a whole lot of shaking going on. That was recorded at some car show over in Sweden back in 2004. So, uh, hey, Boppin' Steve, man, cool. Uh, anyway, before that, we had uh, uh, Dr. John and uh, the Night Trippers doing... How come my dog don't bark when you come around? Well, I'll tell you, buddy, because uh, uh, he's over there during the day while you're at work, and he's screwing your wife. Right. Anyway, <laughs> and we kicked it off with the uh, kind of a dark song there by Dr. John, requested by Vinny. Gree, gree, gumbo, yeah, yeah. It's like some kind of a, it's some voodoo stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah Yep, good stuff though, man. Good stuff. Let me tell you. It was R.I.P. Dr. John. Yep, 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 yep. Sucks, but you know. Hey, we it do. It happens. Hey, they all gotta go, man. They all gotta go. Yeah, it happens. You can't control it. They, you know, it is what it is. They gotta go. We gotta go. Yep. Everybody gotta go at some point. At some point, correct. So. So yeah. Um. So Dead and Company is fucking touring right now. And Nugs T V you can buy the digital you can buy the stream for it, right? The live stream. Okay. But it's fucking lame, dude. I'm just saying if it, people have been like they've been playing the last couple nights. Like, they played at Hollywood Bowl a couple nights ago. Right. And so people are there live at the show and they start streaming it, right? Okay. Well, for whatever, whatever reason, be it they're busted or they run on a battery or whatever, it, it goes poof, right? Right. And so what what it is is it's people want to see it without having to pay for it. Yeah, Which sure. makes sense, sure, you know? Sure, sure. I mean, I get it, the Nugs TV trying to make money off of it, because they have to make some kind of money. You know, they have people that are actually there at the show filming it. You right, know, they have right. to pay them people. But seriously, it's like $100 a show or something. I don't know what it is, but it, it's like maybe 50 I don't know. Okay. But you can buy a package of shows for like $420. <laughs> but it's like, I'm sorry, if I'm by myself at, sitting at home... I'm not going to pay that much money just so I can watch the live stream, you know, in, in full. Yeah. No, I while it's it. happening. Sure, sure, sure. And so people have been, the other night I was going on Mixler, then I switched to Facebook because someone was live on there, and I switched back to Mixler because the Facebook feed died. It's just like, and everyone's playing this game. You know, so what I'm saying is that technology is kind of getting ahead of itself as far as, they, they want to fucking have people pay. If you're not at the show, you're still going to pay to watch it. Right. But they can't keep up with the technology that people have. 
They have awesome phones. They have iPads. They have laptops. You know what I mean? Right. They can fucking broadcast the show from where they're at in the crowd. Sure. You're not supposed to, you know, because obviously Nugs TV wants you to pay to watch their fucking thing. Of course. But what I'm saying is, is they can't keep up. These companies that want you to pay for the stream, they can't keep up with the other people that are in the crowd out there that have the same capability. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. No, no, no way to do it. Right. Right. And so I'm sure they have, like, security. Like, if you have a fucking, if you're filming, it's bright. It's going to be bright. They're going to be able to spot you in the crowd. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. In a deadhead crowd, everyone's on their feet. Everyone's all, like, mixed together. It's really hard to, like, see someone that's, like, illegally broadcasting. I say illegally in quotes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, it's like uh, they they come out with these $100 million, $200, $200 million movies. Right, right. And, and somebody's recording it in the theater. And then they exactly. post they post it up on the web that very night. So right. if you know yeah, where... Yeah, it's the same thing. They can't keep up the technology that people have. Yeah, if you if you know where to go to, to find those, I mean, you can watch, you know, these brand-new first-run movies the, the very right. same day. the weekend they're, they're released. Yeah, the very same day they're released. Yeah. Uh, and... <laughs> if you want to, but you you do run a little bit of a risk because if, like, it's a torrent site or whatever, they do watch those sites, oh, but well, sure. you're not going to go down. They're going to take the person down that's running the site. You sure. know what I mean? They're not going to go after the individual user, which they tried to do back in the fucking... Remember that? They tried to do that. Oh, yeah. They tried to go after the individual... I mean, that's why they, the FBI posts these warnings. Yeah, well... Uh, oh, that's... any unauthorized reproduction. It's like, that doesn't even work anymore, people, because people are so good with this technology that they can't... I'm saying the technology is ahead of them. Yeah, that, well, that's, you know, they took down yeah. Napster that way. Napster, that's what I'm saying. That's what I meant. Yeah. was Napster, yeah. yeah. And so it's like, that's not going to work anymore. You know, people are on to you. But I think it is going too far when we talk about smartphones and smart this and smart that, like we were talking about earlier. It's going too far, people, you know? Sure. And people are all for 5G. It's like, you guys don't know. You don't want to be for 5G. No, you don't. You don't want to be an advocate of that. Right, but, I'm like, I'll give up my fucking cell phone before I go to 5 fucking G. Well, you know, it won't really won't matter because you're still going to be... Smacked right. with all the radiation. So. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of, uh, I don't know, call it, call it technology or whatever, but yeah. uh, new jobs industry. Okay. This, this here article from The Mind Unleashed, once again, uh, dot com. And this may be beneficial to you and everybody, well, a lot of people that are mm -hmm. interested in doing this thriving hemp industry is about to create a jobs boom in the U.S. of A. I agree. So it says, thanks to a provision in the 2018 Farm Bill, hemp is no longer a federally illegally controlled substance in the U.S. The passage of the Farm Bill allows farmers and cultivators to grow the once demonized cannabis plant and even start or restart long forgotten operations as it turns out legally allowing farmers to grow the plant and sell it to yeah. processors is having a massive effect on employment in the US across multiple sectors the hemp industry took in 1.1 billion in revenue in 2018 and is on track to double that more than double that in it says 2022 but uh, I think they meant 2020 yeah, I don't, I don't know. It says 2022. Uh, if, they, if that's what they mean, then that's a long way off. But it's coming faster than that. Uh, anyway, with $2.6 in revenue, according to New Frontier data, the effects of the hemp boom will be felt far from agriculture fields, and even in uh, even the hemp processors, with job growth expected to be a form of accountants, lawyers, compliance officers, government yep. regulators. What do you need them for? IT specialists. Yeah, I know, but uh, a, right. hey, IT specialists, financial insurance experts, transporters, researchers, lab techs, marketers, CFOs, CEOs, and various retail employees. Um, so this is this could be a great thing. Uh, people that are enjoy hemp or or like the the various uses you can get from hemp, 
right. um, is terrific. And, and even if you don't, it's just you know you may you may find yourself in jobs uh, a job availability there. Um, and actually, I have a friend that has started a hemp farm. Right. About twenty minutes from here. Cool. He's and a then, musician, and now he's doing hemp. Uh, the, because they made it legal again in Wisconsin, well, so CBD is legal here, hemp is legal, but they haven't made the step towards the THC yet. Okay, well here here's this this other article that uh, I I guess it's good that they did this, but I still don't wouldn't trust those mm -hmm. certain states. Anyway, uh, according to this here, states can no longer block legal hemp shipments within their borders, according to the USDA. Um, so it says... Okay. Uh, because they're busting trucks, they're busting people, transporting Bullshit. through their state. Yep. But it said, according to this, uh, the USDA uh, um, said on Tuesday, which would have been not this Tuesday, but the previous one, that hemp can be transported across state lines, even through states that have not enacted laws okay. allowing the crop's production. Good. And the de that the descheduling of the plant and its derivatives, the CBD, under 2018 Farm Bill are already in effect because of the self-executing and do not require further action by federal agencies. In a four-point legal opinion issued by the agency, USDA specified that hemp has been removed from the Controlled Substances Act. Uh, states and Indian tribes may not prohibit the interstate transportation of lawfully marketed hemp products, including those that fall under the more limited research-focused provisions of the 2014 Farm Bill, and that restrictions on participations in the hemp industry apply for individuals within the felony drug convictions. Uh, so the USDA Office of the General Counsel said that while states and Indian tribes can still control the production of hemp within their jurisdictions, interstate commerce must be permitted following the implementation of the agency's hemp regulations. So, they're, they're still going to bust trucks. These assholes are still going to do it. Uh, so they're still going to bust trucks going through them and, and cause them all kinds of grief. Right. And and uh, but but. They're not supposed to. They're not. No, they're not. Uh, it's it's not it's not within their deal to to be able to do that. Uh, no, but, their jurisdiction, right? Or whatever you call it. Yeah, jurisdiction. But uh, so anyway, they um, they will cause you know, like I said, heartache and grief to people transporting it, uh, even though they're they're not allowed to, um, and and so. Maybe, but they are allowed to. No, no, they're not allowed to harass people driving through. Oh, oh okay. Oh, the okay. states and the, and the, and the reservations you. Okay. are not allowed to harass. The, the drivers are allowed to. Uh, the, the transportation companies are allowed to transport it through that state. Right. And they're not allowed to stop them, but they will. Um, yep. Yeah. So, uh, and, Just an harassment. Yeah. Just nothing so, else. So, you know, whatever. Then, then, then fine. I, I imagine that people that are transporting it will find another way uh, another path, so they don't have to go through those assholic states. Right, right, of course. And 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 that that will um, screw them over, uh, you know, for for their own their own thing that they uh, think they're good for. Right. <laughs> exactly. All right, I just, I wanted to share this article just because I don't even know what he's getting at here, or, or they are getting at. I should say it's on Infowars.com. Uh, by somebody named Kellen McBreen. Hundreds of illegals from Ebola-ridden Congo dumped in Texas. 350 more are on the way. Uh, so anyway, apparently, uh, it says here, hundreds of illegal aliens from the Democratic Republic of the Congo in Africa, which is currently experiencing a massive Ebola virus breakout, have been dropped off in San Antonio, and hundreds more will arrive in the near future. Um, so, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, apparently, uh, according to the article anyway, um, you, a lot of the Ebola people, you, you can't tell that they have Ebola uh, once they get there. No. And, and so if they're bringing in these Ebola folks... Um, 
and dropping them off there in Texas, I guess. Uh, it, it, I don't know. Is that is, are, are they going to be bringing Ebola into the U.S.? And and uh, I talked. To, we talked about this earlier in the chat, but uh, so drop them off. I don't in know. Who knows? They'll try to do something. They'll try to do something. You know, drop drop them off in D.C. If if they got a bowl, put them in D.C. Right. Let all, Bring them there. Let all them congressmen and senators and judges and all those people get the Ebola. <laughs> right. Yeah, let them get it. I don't know. I just found it kind of funny. I I, I doubt anybody's bringing the Ebola over or or. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I have really no, no way of knowing, but um, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I found it to be humorous just because it was, like, so absurd. Right. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but then again, it is on InfoWars, so. Um, Imagine that. Yeah. Okay. So, and, yeah. Uh, what, next what? weekend, I will not be here. Remember? That's right. Next weekend, she won't be here. One last thing, and this is just a real okay. quick deal, a little, little tech note. Uh, for Firefox users, um, okay. and it's not really that big a deal because you could already do this setting, but now they've changed it to a default setting uh, in Firefox that they are going to start blocking third-party cookies by default, um, which is okay. good. That's you know a little better tracking um, for people that don't go in and change their settings, which is yeah. a lot of a lot <laughs> of people. So um, if you if you want to, if you're not using Firefox, you know, or, or if you're using an old version of Firefox or whatever, uh, you can easily go into your privacy settings there and and block those third-party party cookies. You can block all cookies. You can do whatever you want. Blocking all cookies tends to be a pain in the ass because, uh, you know, a lot of sites uh, will say you need to have cookies on to do this or if you're, you're storing uh, uh, various settings for that site. Who is who is aliens? I don't know. Oh no, no. Clinger and Hot Lips? No. They're not aliens. Well Klinger, Klinger might have been, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But he's just a Jewish dude. <laughs> yeah. Well a lot of that's, and that's their, their stage names. That's their their names from Mass. No, that's no, not I, their real yeah, names. Like Loretta what's Swit, her name? Swit. Loretta Swit, Hot Lips and what's his name? Um uh, I don't know. Clinger. I can't think of it. Clinger. It's yeah. always Clinger. That's it. That's all. That's him. Okay, we gotta do our last. <laughs> we gotta do our last set here. So. Uh, well, we are oh. gonna be a break Stop up. <laughs> well, I do that sometimes. All right. Um, okay. Here we go. They're eighty. He's eighty. That's why he looks funny. He's eighty. Why well, he always looks funny. Anyway. <laughs> Three. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back after this. <laughs> uh, that's the Lost Fingers doing uh, their version of Black Betty. <laughs> Good stuff, man. It's got to tell you. Anyway, before that, uh, Queen uh, sat bottom girls for Mr. Vincent Easley, and we kicked it off with the Doors and love her madly. So that's gonna wrap it up for us here on this. Friday, yes. Freaker Friday night. Yes, it is. Yes, Grimner did say easily. He did, and again. <laughs> All right, tomorrow, tomorrow there is no flash, meaning there's no dark table. However, if somebody else wants to come on and fill in during the dark table time, feel free, because uh, well, he's not going to be here, so it's open, open space. Right. So uh, anybody wants to come on and and dark it up. Feel free, darks. Um, I'll be on Sunday. I haven't tried no broadcasting with the new computer, so yeah. I don't oh. know if I'm even set up. But I, I, if not, we could do that real quick. Uh, yeah. a, a, anyway, on Sunday I'll be here at my normal time doing the blues and the trivia and all mm -hmm. that stuff, followed up by Hal Anthony. And then again, uh, I'll be on Monday night with the Grim Leftovers, 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, check the schedule there on RLM. I, of course... Flash did mention he may not be doing In a Perfect World if Vinny's not around to do it. So okay. uh, we, we may be having some, some scheduling changes over the summer here. Of course, Vinny's right. leaving for his his boat trip, canoe trip down the river. 
coming up here. So uh, he'll about be gone for a couple of weeks, come back, and then close out, and then go off for the rest of the summer. Uh, Grammy on the week of uh, Father's Day, which is the the, the ni- 19th and 21st shows. She will not be there that week. Um, okay. Moose Girl will not be on Freakers next week. Nope. Because she's I'll be gonna, blue oxing. She's going to be out celebrating Flag Day. No, blue oxing. Flat Flag Day. <laughs> no, I believe it will be blue oxing. No, I will not be celebrating the rain day. All right. So anyway, but uh, just stay tuned to RLM, and, and you'll find all, kind of, all kinds of great stuff coming your way. And if My you want to do it. be far from that. Yeah, I know. And if, <laughs> if you want to do a show here on Real Liberty Media, let me know. I'll get you set up. And, right. Uh, and, uh, you got something to say. Yeah. Say it. No. Say it. Don't say spray it. it. All right. Say it. Don't spray it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you all later. Have a great weekend. Yep. Peace. Peace.